Hello, my fellow flawless, limitless, sexy, sassy, saucy, HBICs. How are you on this lovely morning, afternoon, or evening? How are you all? I hope you are all deciding who the hell you want to be, choosing the specific version of yourself that you choose to be, the version of you that has what you want. That's that's what I mean by that. Um, if you're new here, how you doing? I am Kimberly, and I'm obsessed with manifestation and getting what I want. Getting what I want. <laughs> As I'm sure that's why you're watching manifestation videos, you are too. And if that is the case, then I would love for you to subscribe and come back and see me. I would also appreciate it every single one of you would give me a like on this video so my videos can get out and help other future HBICs, right? We've all been the newbies. We've all been the beginners. And, you know, I love to help people. So giving my video a like, which is free, gets those videos out. Just saying. Okay. Some basic bitch. If you need help figuring out what's going on between a you and your manifestation, please feel free to email me at manifestingwithkimberly at gmail.com. All of my coaching options are in the Dropbox below. They're in the screens. It just went by. Editing Kim here. I have three channel memberships. Three. The most luxurious of those channel memberships is the Advanced Manifestors. Yes, the advanced manifestors. We will be meeting tomorrow, Tuesday at 8 p.m. ish Eastern Standard Time. That will be our very first session. This is the group that we will deep dive manifestation. Yes, we were going to cover all topics of manifestation. It's going to deepen your knowledge, your trust, and your belief in this beautiful thing we, we are doing with our minds. That group gives you full access to all of the channel memberships that I'm going to describe here in a sec. Absolutely all of them. And this group, the Advanced Manifestors, is the only group that will have the recordings of the Exclusive Lives group. So the Advanced Manifestors will have all the replays, the recordings of all the memberships. Okay. They have access to all the memberships. I cannot push this one enough. Out of all the three to choose from, the advanced is the best. It's three for the price of one, along with the replays, along with we will have random private live streams where it's just the three of us on YouTube lives I'm referring to outside of the Zoom membership. If you are new to my channel, how you doing? I'm Kimberly and I would love for you to subscribe and come back and see me. If you are new and also joining that advanced membership, just so you are aware, I will post a Zoom link shortly before the membership time. So for the advanced manifestors, I will post that before 8 p.m. tomorrow. It will be under the community post. That is where you get the Zoom link. And quite frankly, for all the channel memberships, I post the Zoom link shortly before the group. Okay, now back to the original recording where I didn't have a black eye. I have a, a, a group called the Exclusive Lives Coaching Group, which I go live with them every single Tuesday around 9.30 p.m.-ish Eastern Standard Time. That is a zhuzhing group where we discuss success stories and tips and tricks of manifestation. It's a zhuzh group. We pump each other up as we are moving along our journey. I also have my Friday group, which is the Hot Seat slash Group Coaching. I go live with them every single Friday around 9 a.m.-ish Eastern Standard Time. That is the group to join if you want to ask me specific questions about your scenario. You get yourself into the hot seat. You can ask me anything you want within a time limit. But if you like weekly encouragement, if you'd like to get a taste of what coaching with me is like, join the Hot Seat group. Other than that, I have TikTok, I have Instagram, I have Clapper, and I would love for you to join me everywhere. Oh my God, let's stop talking basic bitch and get into the, the nuggets of this video. Okay, I want to um, give you an idea of if you are someone right now in this moment thinking to yourself, you know, I wish someone would just simply summarize what are we doing with manifestation? Why are we able to manifest? And what should I do to manifest what I want? And if that's where your mind is at, this is the video for you. So sit back, relax, get yourself a drink, and we are going to jump in. Now, I'm going to read you quickly a little bit from Ernest Holmes. So first and foremost, I want to say before I get into this quote that 
listen, the understanding of who you are and how you are able to manifest, understanding how we're manifesting is so important. And I feel often overlooked, not by all, but often overlooked. When you take the time to really dive deep and understand the how you are even able to manifest, that begins the idea of you having a solid foundation, a foundation to fall back on when you are doubting and thinking that this isn't going to work. So the how, how are we even able to manifest? It is because we now, we all can have different concepts, okay? In other words, some people are more sciency minded some people aren't ready to accept that, you know, well, this is the truth. This is how we manifest. So I'm going to offer this up. Whatever you believe in, whether it be God, universe, higher power, source energy, moonbeams, that thing that you believe in, I believe in God. God as pure, unadulterated consciousness. In other words, the absolute, the absolute, the all of all. The ending, the beginning, the alpha, the omega, God. Okay, I used to think of God because I was raised Catholic. I used to think of God as being Gandalf on the mountain, like you shall not pass. And no, you can't have what you want. That desire is an ego desire, Kim. You cannot have that. All of that crap, throw it out the window. God is the all, it's the everything. It's pure, unadulterated. And if you don't know what unadulterated means, it means no fuckery, no flaws, no limits, no nothing pure, unconditional love. We are all part of that. Now, by part, I don't mean breaking us up into pieces, even though I might say the word a piece. It's just, it's just chit chat. It's talk. Okay. Settle down. So <laughs> we are an individualized part of God. But remember, God is everywhere, omnipresent, I can never say it. I'm omnipotent or whatever. God is everything. God is everything. And for some, especially in the old, older books like um, you, uh, Genevieve Varend, Ernest Holmes, uh, even, oh, what's his name? The, well, uh, ben Tuff kind of referred to it as like a universal mind. And if that sits better with you other than God, fine. Universal mind, universal consciousness, meaning every single one of us, every single one of us is the universal mind. We are all it. And if that seems too hard to accept, that is okay. That will come with time. But think of it from this perspective. We, if there's a universal mind and it's like a disco ball, a pretty little glittering disco ball, each one of us is an extension of it. So picture like wires or arms coming out of the disco ball. We are all connected to one of them. Maybe that little picture will help. But that is how we are able to manifest. Because of being that. Which is why we refer to God as the I am. And, you know, when you hear affirmations, you know, I am chosen. I am loved. You are declaring that that's who you are. So whatever you say that follows, I am, you are deciding to be that thing. So it, that's why some affirmations are like, you know, I am the version of myself because there are infinite versions of ourselves. Yeah. This is not necessarily going to be an in-depth beginners type video, but this is like a summary, you know, or, or an juge for some of you that don't even need the summary. But we are able to manifest because of who we are. We are that pure consciousness that universal mind, God, we are all it. Okay. We're just an individualized version of it. But from there, we get to choose any version of this individualized part of consciousness. So the individualized part is me, is Kimberly. And from there, Kimberly gets to choose any version of herself because they all exist. Everything exists. Creation is finished. Everything exists. Any possible outcome, anything you can think of, every ending to every mathematical equation exists. And we are all doing it by choice, meaning we are choosing to be who we want to be. 
Most of us think that, you know, you didn't make choices to land where you are. And I get that. I didn't either. It was a tough concept to grasp. But now I can't unsee it. And you won't be able to either if you stick with this. But everything you are experiencing is a result of choices you have made in your being. So you might hear, hey, who are you being today? What version of self are you? It's because we are always being a version of self within the infinite versions of self. Self is just another really way of determining or calling our consciousness. Self, the individualized self. To manifest, you change self. To manifest, you break the habit of being a particular version of yourself. So if you are someone manifesting love or money, and it's something you've never experienced before, well, then you are breaking the habit of being the version of you that is lackful-minded. Money's hard to come by. Love never works for you. You're breaking the habit of being that person. And I'm going to say that on this channel, I discuss things from being or understanding the knowing that we are God, that we are that consciousness. So we don't necessarily have to stick to the same rules or beliefs that maybe other channels discuss, like you must impress your subconscious mind. Now, I'm not here to say you don't have a subconscious mind. That's not what, that's not what I'm saying. I, but I, I truly believe and accept that there is nothing that can limit God. Nothing can, right? And I don't think of God as a gender. God is everything. So... Use, you know, using that information, I'm hoping you'll see that to the point of there's nothing that can limit you. There is nothing that can stop God. And that's who you are. You're God. So if nothing can stop God, why are we fearing that we won't change or that we won't become the version of self that can have whatever it is that you want? So basic bitch in this, let's basic bitch, let's kim this down. You're able to manifest because you are consciousness. You are God. You are the universe. Period. And you've been in a habit of being a version of self that doesn't have their desires. And in order to get those desires, you need to start the new habit of deciding to be the version of you that has the desire. And believe me and know that the minute you make that decision, you go to that new self. You become it. You are it. Just, just by saying it. But most of us don't stick with it. We fall back and we go back to old thinking. Or we go logical, logical-minded. Like, okay, well, if I'm it and I go there that quickly, then where is the manifestation, Kim? It's not here. There you go. You are declaring to be the version of you that doesn't have the manifestation. I get it that this sounds really simplistic, but manifestation is simplistic. We make it hard. We make it hard from our limited beliefs or the limited beliefs of others. And every single one of us has been conditioned with beliefs. So most of our beliefs aren't even our own fault. They came through experience. But you get to dump those beliefs and become a new you and actually get whatever you want because of who you really are, which is God. Consciousness, universe. We are surrounded by a universal subjectivity, a subjective, creative consciousness, which is receptive, neutral, impersonal, always receiving the impress of our thought, and which has no alternative other than to operate directly upon it, thus creating the things which we think. Each one should realize that there is nothing in him that denies that which is he desires. Our unity with our good is not established while there is anything in us that denies it. People often say, how shall I know when I know? If you knew, you would not ask this question. The very fact that you can ask it proves you do not know. For when you know that you know, how can you prove it by doing? Thought sets definite force and motion in mind relative to the individual who thinks. For instance, I am known in consciousness as Ernest Holmes or Manifesting with Kimberly.
For that is my name and every claim made for me, which I accept, operates through avenues of mind activity and returns to me as some condition. In practice, always forget the limitations of individuality. Each treatment should embody a recognition of this whole because it is omnipresent. We deal with absoluteness. This is the attitude that we should have. What we need is to know the truth. This does not mean that we need not be active. Of course we shall be active. But we need not compel things to happen. A good demonstration is made when the truth, gathering its own power, lifts one out of his environment. And until that time comes, he should stay where he is in order that he may know when he has made a demonstration. It is not a good demonstration if when we give our treatments, we get we have to struggle just as before. Principle is absolute. And insofar as any individual can actually induce within consciousness upon principle, a definite concrete acceptance of his desire, it will manifest. Even if every thought on earth had to change to compel it, if it were a bit of information that only one person on earth knew and he was in the center of Africa, it would be produced. Cause and effect are but two sides of thought and spirit is both cause and effect. Prayer is its own answer. Now, if the one who prays only partly believes, then there is a tendency to set an idea in motion. If the next day he wholly doubts, this idea must be wiped out. In dealing with mine, we are dealing with a force which we cannot fool. We can fool ourselves, we can fool others, but we cannot cheat principle out of the slightest shadow of our most subtle concept, for this is impossible. The hand writes and passes on, but the writing is left there, nevertheless. And the only thing that can erase it is a writing of different character. We must either transcend all that has gone before by walking above it, neutralize it by an opposite state of consciousness, or endure it. Get a sense of self-mastery of being equal to every occasion. There is nothing too great. There is no obstacle that you cannot surmount no obstruction that you cannot dissipate by the power of truth. If your concept of truth is dynamic enough and clear enough, and if the embodiment is complete. Now, kimming some of that down. First and foremost, I read you that as your little reminder. And again, this is Ernest Holmes, that what you are dealing with when manifesting is absolute absolute God consciousness, pure unadulterated consciousness, unconditional love, the universal mind. We are not being judged by our, our wanting of our desires. So it doesn't matter why you want your desire. We often hear, oh, that's an ego desire. You can't have that. No, sorry. Ego is another fault or flaw that we have believed we have. Just saying not here to battle it. I'm just saying it is what it is. It's another ego to keep you believing you are just this limited 3D human, period. And when you step back and start realizing that most of what we believe in, even around manifestation, most of what we believe in is somebody else's limited beliefs. We are God consciousness. We have access to every single possible version of ourself. And right now in this moment, there is a version of you who has the manifestation that you're wanting. It's the only reason why you're even able to have the desire for your manifestation. It's because it's already created. God has already said yes to you. You just don't know that because you've been in the habit of believing otherwise. And what Ernest Holmes is trying to convey here is you are not being judged by your desires. You are not being judged for wanting your desires. You know, you, you are not judged because, I don't know, maybe you told someone to F off today and now you're afraid you were in a bad mood. You acted negative. So now you won't get your manifestation. None of that is true. All right. God is unconditional love. We are getting all. And I am not trying in any way, shape or form to push you into some idea of religion or religious talk. That's not where I'm going. I'm, I'm saying is God is all. God is omnipresent, right? This isn't 
trying to get you to genuflect and, you know, do the sign of the cross. I'm not, that's not what this is. You are able to have any desire of your choosing. And the only reason why the desire enters your mind, because there is a version of you that has it. It's waiting on you to allow yourself to have it. Most of us get stuck in logical thinking, and that's why we begin to doubt. So when we look at our 3D and declare that manifestation isn't working or my manifestation is not here yet, there must be something else wrong. The only thing wrong in that moment is that you think there's something wrong. The only reason why your manifestation isn't fully materialized is because you still think there's something more to do. You still think it's not here yet. You are looking at the after effect world. The 3D is the dead world. The 3D is the manifestation of old thoughts, old versions of you. So stop looking out here. Stop looking out here and judging that it's not here yet. What we don't know is how our manifestations will unfold. What we don't know is when they will unfold. What I can tell you from my own experience is the more often you make a decision that you are now the you that has what you want and you are just watching your own unfolding and stop seeing things as not working and you're just making the choice to be the new you, it will move quickly. It has every time for myself. And I don't think God is just doing it for Kimberly. God does for all because God is all. God is you. God is me. Okay. Basically, we live in a cause and effect world, and we are the only cause to what we experience in the 3D. How we cause things to change in our 3D is by changing who we are or who we believe we are. And that's why in my videos, you constantly hear me say that. Who do you believe you are? Do you believe you are someone who can have a loving, fulfilling, committed relationship if you're manifesting an SB? Do you believe you can be a multimillionaire if you're manifesting money? Most of us have been taught that those things don't come easy. Got to work hard for them. Money don't fall off trees. We got to change that. We got to break the habit of being the you that has those limitations. Be the you that's not afraid to snore through one of my videos. Like my girl. So manifestation summarized. You can have whatever you want. You just have to choose to be the you that has it. You don't have to lie to yourself and say you see something you don't see in the 3D. You just have to choose to be the you that has it. Don't think literal. Don't think logical. This is not logic. This is not logical thinking. This is realizing, holy shit, I'm God. Holy shit, I am pure, unadulterated consciousness. And I can decide that I'm a multimillionaire. I can decide that I am in the most amazing relationship of my life. And somehow, some way, God, who is everyone else, as well as me, is making that happen for me in this 3D reality. Period. There's nothing else to do but make that choice. And you make that choice through repetition because you might get a doubtful thought here and there. I think that's the part of having this human experience. But it's not the doubtful thought that keeps your manifestation away from you. It's your fear of the doubtful thought. It's the fear that you're doing something wrong. It's the fear of it's not working. I'm never going to get what I want. I am fucking crazy for believing in manifestation. That is what's keeping your shit away from you. Drop that shit. Break that habit. Become new self and watch the world change. Nothing as Mr. Holmes has stated, nothing, no object, no person, no obstacle can stop you from getting what you want. Nothing and no one. And that's because of who you are. This, I really, really hope if you are someone just finding manifestation content, you take it very serious what I'm saying. Put some focus on who you really are. Because when you get comfortable with that idea of, oh my God, I am consciousness. 
I am connected to every single other person. And that's how this is working. You're not messing with people's free will. You're not doing anything blasphemous. This is God. And every possible outcome exists now. Exists now. So choose to be the you that has it and your life will change. How do you make that choice? You can affirm it. You can visualize yourself experiencing what you want. You can affirm, I am now the version of me that, that has blank, blankety blank, whatever it is you're manifesting. I started with telling myself, I am the version of me who's in the most loving, fulfilling, committed relationship. It's the most amazing relationship I've ever been in my life. I know, I know what it feels like now to be chosen, to be loved unconditionally. I know because that's who I am now. That's who I am. I'm the version of me who is happy and fulfilled in every single area of her life. And guess what started happening? My life started changing. And I became exactly what I told myself that I was. Start telling yourself who you are. I am what? That, that is making the decision. It's the conviction in your decision to be that new self that is bringing about change. That's using the power of God. And a little tip, especially if you're new, don't let that 3D world tell you that you are not that new self. Remember, the 3D is the after effect. It's the old, dead world, old thoughts. Okay? And on that note... I'll see you tomorrow.